Chicago-based global architectural powerhouse Skidmore Owings & Merrill designs everything from train stations to high-rises to airports. In fact, it's currently working on a redesign of the State and Lake L station downtown. But it also has its sights set beyond Chicago, beyond Earth in fact. In collaboration with the European Space Agency and MIT, the firm has developed a design for a lunar colony grounded in science fact rather than science fiction. That design is now being showcased at the world-renowned Venice Biennale Arts Festival in Italy. Joining us now to tell us more is Georgi Petrov, Associate Director at Skidmore Owings & Merrill, where he works as a structural engineer and at least part of the time as a space architect. Uh, Georgi, thank you so much for joining us. Um, so as I just mentioned, this was an initiative from the European Space Agency. How did uh, Skidmore Owings & Merrill come to be designing a colony for the moon? Uh, thank you very much for having me tonight. Uh, it's a great pleasure to share our work with you. Um, well, most things that have flown in space uh, so far has been designed by engineers uh, that, that start with the, the rocket and uh, then put the spaceship in. And then the last thing that goes in there is the human. So uh, we feel that an uh, architecture firm and our way of thinking of designing with the humans in mind first and then wrapping the technology around them could really contribute uh, to to how we design things for outer space. And so uh, we were fortunate enough to be approached by the European Space Agency to collaborate with them to to give form to their vision of uh, how we could go back to the moon in a different way. What were some of the parameters of this design project? Were you designing habitats or the entire infrastructure and ecosystem of the lunar colony? We, we actually started on many different levels. Uh, we, we, we started with a master plan, sort of ideas of urbanism and how you form a community that can grow over time. Um, we also tried to introduce a sense of placemaking, of, of poetry, uh, a, a habitat, a, a human community needs not just to survive, but also an, an identity. Every city and every town on earth has a landmark that the residents are proud of. Uh, we also designed one of the possible habitats, so on a scale of a single unit. And then we've also looked at, uh, you know, some technology and, and our expertise of how to actually build it and put it together. So we worked on many different sort of levels. So is what you've envisaged, uh, is this realizable with the current technology? Yes, uh, I, we, we try to start with this, the idea that everything that we've designed is something that has either been tested and flown in space or it's being developed right now. And so it's given the, the resources and the will, it's something that could be implemented in the near future. Uh, how would these habitats be built? As you've been speaking, of course, we've been uh, showing folks some of the, the renderings that, that you all have shared with us. Would they, um, you know, would the materials have to be brought to the moon um, or the habitats have to be brought to the moon and assembled there? Uh, what are the resources like on the moon to build them? Well, uh, one of the places on the moon that's been the most interesting in the last 10 years is the, the two poles, and particularly the southern pole, because over the last 20 years, uh, through many missions, both from NASA and other countries, we've kind of realized that there's a lot of resources in, in the southern pole. And so uh, originally, everything that you bring would have to be brought from Earth. Uh, but the idea is that we would go to the poles because that's where there's there's water and the resources that you could learn how to use the the material there, because even even with the current uh, sort of advancements in rocket technology, uh, it's still very very expensive to get to the moon, and so anything that you don't have to bring from Earth would be very welcome and used from there. And NASA has targeted returning humans to the moon by 2024 uh, with its Artemis mission, although most observers, of course, expect that date to be pushed back. Uh, do you think we'll see some of these designs or variations of them on the moon in our lifetimes? I sincerely hope so, uh, although it's been a, quite a while since we, we've set foot there. But in the last few years, the collaboration between sort of government agencies like NASA and ESA and the private sector has given sort of new life and new hope uh, that we could get there sustainably pretty soon. Um, and of course, there's the Venice Biennale. Uh, what kind of installation can visitors see if they get the chance to go to Venice this summer? 
Well, uh, the Venice Biennale topic this year is how we will live together. And uh, the idea of, of our moon village is that we would go there together collaboratively and, and not as a competition. And so we, we have built our exhibit uh, along those lines. We have a big model of the, the master plan and we do have produced this video that you, you showed a little bit that's telling our story. Um, and of course, there's the Venice Biennale. Uh, what kind of installation? Okay. Um, Georgi Petrov, we'll have to leave it there. Thank you so much for joining us. We're looking forward to, to seeing what you come up with on the moon or when it gets there. Here is how we live.